Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Today is January 17th, 2021. Let's talk boxing, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, over my shoulder is a boxing grade. This is the Raging Bull. Right? Not just a movie, an actual fighter. This is the Raging Bull. This is Jake LaMotta. This is the first man to beat Sugar Ray Robinson. Right? I know old timers will point out that he outweighed Robinson and stuff like that. Okay, fine. But understand, this is the guy who, against a technician, was able to run red lights was able to collapse the pocket, was able to lower his shoulder, was able to let his hands go, was willing to trade, take shots to give shots. That was the Raging Bull's fight style. Now this is exactly the kind of fight style that would give a technician like, we can just name him, right? Floyd Mayweather. Uh, Marquez, Teofimo Lopez, problems, right? Understand, if you allow a technician to counterpunch you, if you throw long punches and let your punches linger, if you don't raise room temperature and you allow the technician to pot shot you, they're in a defensive stance. They're looking for openings. You start to throw a punch that they see will hit their shoulder or will whiz over their head or they can duck and they have what they want. You there, extended, unprotected on that side. Right? If a technician is able to land close to 50% of their shots. And what I want people to do is to look at the accuracy rate of Floyd Mayweather in his career, of Teofimo Lopez in his career, right? If you're one of these starters who comes out, shows your punches early, so the technician actually has a learning curve at the beginning of the fight instead of in the middle of the fight, so the technician can give away early rounds, make the adjustments like Floyd did against Zab Judah, and then dominate the rest of the fight. You're gonna lose to a technician, right? Especially a technician with a hair trigger left hook, like Floyd, like Teofimo Lopez. Well, one of the things that makes boxing the great sport that it is, is the trash talk. And understand the trash talk comes from everywhere, doesn't it? Right? You have fighters trash talking. You have members of the entourage trash talking with each other. You have promoters trash talking with each other. You have managers trash talking with each other. Well, today, and it's a must read. I encourage everyone to flock to the article on BoxingScene.com and it's January the 17th. You have a world-class trainer, right? Of fighters not even in the division, right? Just a world-class trainer who himself happened to be a champion when he fought. The guy we used to call Mr. Magoo in an earlier generation, Buddy McGirt, right? The guy who retooled Kovalev, right? Buddy McGirt, trash talking about a possible fight between unbeaten Teofimo Lopez. And let's be clear here, Teofimo is the top of the hill at 135 right now. Let's also be clear that the lightweight division is one of boxing's glamour divisions, 
right? That's a glamour division historically. People go back in history, you've heard of great lightweight champions, right? Tail female stands at top of the pot. And of course, Buddy McGirt feels that Shakur Stevenson, Olympic silver gold, oh, excuse me, Olympic silver medalist, unbeaten, is protected. That's Buddy's word. He claims that they're just building up Stevenson so that when he fights Teofimo Lopez, there's a big payday all round, but Lopez wins the fight. Right now, let me just say the comparison is unfair. Lopez has told everyone that he only has one more fight left at 135 pounds. He's at that age where his body is going to require him soon to go up to 140. Now understand, there's another group. They're neglected. They're neglected. It's the guys at 140. Right? Josh Taylor can't wait to fight Teofimo Lopez. Taylor, of course, is unbeaten. Jose Carlos Ramirez has exactly the kind of raging bull fight style that I think would give Lopez the fight of his life. Understand, Ramirez, unbeaten, like Taylor, right? A belt holder. Then you have some other guys, Regis Progre, who is willing to drop his hands, who probably hits harder. Than Lopez waiting for him at 140 and of course you have some others Jose Zepeda who is a hell of a fighter now the public might not know these names as well as they know Gervonta Davis right Ryan Garcia has a lot of followers on Twitter of course Vasily Lomachenko, who Lopez just beat. Two-time Olympic gold medal winner. Had beaten a lot of big names, including Jose Pedraza, one of my favorites, who's, of course, waiting for Lopez at 140. Right? The public knows the names at 135. Right? Some of those guys have a lot of Twitter followers. They don't know the names at 140. Right? But make no mistake, at 135, with all the talent there, the top of the hill is Teofimo Lopez. He just beat Lomachenko. He beat, in a very tough fight, a guy who the public's just learning about, Nakatani, who beat Felix Verdejo. Right? Lopez, of course, beat Richard Kami by stoppage. Lopez hits harder at 135 than most. So it's unfair for Buddy McGirt, for some reason in this milieu of all this talent, to decide to talk about a guy who fights at 130. 130. And to say that Lopez, a big champ at 135, who's about to leave the division after his next fight, would beat it, right? So I think Buddy is being unfair. Shakur Stevenson right now, I believe, would give Lomachenko a hell of a fight at 135, right? Stevenson against Devin Haney would be interesting. I think Haney moves too well. But that's an interesting fight that could go either way. Right? But Stevenson is slender. Isn't the puncher that some of the others are. Right? Let's be clear. Gervonta Davis hits harder than him. On a pound-for-pound -pound basis, we'll call it. Right? Ryan Garcia is blessed with heavy hands. Right? Stevenson only has eight KOs at 130. So it's a little bit surprising that of all the fighters out there, all of them, 
Buddy McGirt would choose to pick on Shakur Stevenson. Right, Stevenson has a bright future ahead of him. But styles make fights. A guy who collapses the pocket with the level of defense, with the accuracy of a Teofimo Lopez who hits as hard as Teofimo, just look at the KOs, <laughs> isn't the ideal opponent right now for young Shakur Stevenson. Right? Shakur will have his day. Right now, the day belongs to Teofimo Lopez. Understand, I feel Lopez beats Devin Haney. Right? I do feel that Lopez is the top shelf at 135. He's already beaten Lomachenko. Lomachenko required surgery after the fight. It's questionable whether Loma was even 100% for most of the fight. I believe Lopez's people looked at the last third of that fight. When Lomachenko finally cracks Lopez's code, realizes that his way to win is on his front foot, crashing the pocket like Jake LaMotta. Right? That's what Lomachenko should have been doing from, at the latest, the third round. He waited too long. He gave away the first 60% of the fight. Lopez earned the decision. Doesn't have to fight Loma again. Not only that, they're much easier touches. Right? Guys who are just entering world-class level, like Ryan Garcia, with big names, which imply big paydays, that if Lopez wanted to pad his resume, he could feast on. Right? So, pay close attention to what's happening at 135. But understand, right now, Lopez holds a lot of cards. Right? I know there are multiple belts out there and stuff like that, if you asked me who is the lightweight champion, I would say Teofimo Lopez. And I think the world of Devin Haney. Right? I would say Lopez. If Lopez decides to move up to 140, let's just say the world will then understand the level of talent at 140. It's prodigious. Right? We're all focused on 147, right? 147 has some bigger-than-life names, right? It has the emeritus guy, who's the clear first ballot Hall of Famer, Manny Pacquiao, right? Several fights of highlight careers. Big wins over other great fighters. His victory over Miguel Cotto, did Cotto ever look worse? in a legitimate boxing match, right? Manny Pacquiao's win over Oscar De La Hoya. I saw where some reporter stopped Oscar the other day <laughs> and said, who hits harder, Manny Pacquiao or Floyd Mayweather, right? Think about how long Floyd's been retired. And you think about how long ago that Manny Pacquiao fight was. And yet people still remember it and Manny is still fighting. At 147, you have the guy who I think is the best in the sport, pound for pound. Think about it. He's fighting a very fast-handed, very fast-handed, Cal Brook. And he's changing his stance in the middle of the fight. And what does it get him? It gets him a stoppage. And that's Terrence Crawford. Right? It has a guy who, BoxRack.com. Rates is better pound for pound than Terrence Crawford. And that's Errol Spence. Understand, too, the smack talk at 147 is excellent right now. Some reporter got Manny Pacquiao to say, look, I, I'll beat Errol Spence. He's too slow for me. Now, how could Pacquiao say that when Pacquiao is what, in his 40s or something like that? Outrageous. But I just want people to look at Teofimo Lopez, who belongs on the short list of the best in the sport, pound for pound. Understand, it has been a takeover. 
right? Lopez hasn't yet fought a Jake LaMotta. Some of these type fighters, front foot, rough and tumble, head low. He's hitting you with punches and his shoulder, right? And his forearms. Some of these fighters exist at 140 pounds right now. I invite the public here. We're trying to shine a light on guys in the sport who deserve the light. I invite people to take a hard look right here at one of the champions at 140 pounds, Jose Carlos Ramirez, right? I want you to see how he fights inside. You can Google him. Unbeaten fighter. By the way, he's talking about moving up to 147, right? He's hearing the party noise from the Errol Spence Crawford Pacquiao division, right? The Keith Thurman, Sean Porter, Danny Garcia division. And he wants in. Right? Well, let me just say, that's exactly the kind of fight style that I feel could beat Teofimo Lopez. If Lopez wants a real contest, if people like Buddy McGirt are going to talk about Teofimo and possible opponents, please look upward. Josh Taylor, who beat Regis Progre, has already said he wants to fight. Teofimo Lopez. I'm telling you, Jose Zepeda, I don't care that he has two losses, would give Lopez all he can handle. I want people to think about Lopez at 140. In about 12 months, we're going to have to. Right? Because a fighter's body can only take so much. Sooner or later, the body is going to say, hey, player, I'm holding on to this five extra pounds of water. Right? Hey, we're not in our teens anymore. We're in our mid-twenties. Even if you pivot to a vegetarian diet, which I have mixed feelings about for fighters in general, right? Even if you pivot to a vegetarian diet, right? I'm going to require us to move up in weight. Just like Usyk can no longer make Cruiser a division he dominated. Understand, he was undisputed at Cruiser. You have Lopez, and he's not undisputed at 135. Devin Haney has a share of the title. But you have Lopez feasting at 135. He's going to have to move up. And when he does, we're going to get away from guys who like to have a cushion between them and an opponent, right, Devin Haney. We're going to end up in a division where guys have tossed the cushion out. They're coming inside. They're going to say, okay, look, you're a sharpshooter. Is your punch enough to hurt me? If it's not, I'm going to try to walk through it like the Raging Bull used to. Then I'm going to have you feel my power. I'm going to keep my head low. So you are either going to have to vacate the pocket or get low with me. And I'm going to wrestle with you a bit. Tie up a hand and throw punches. Right? This is an era where we like precision. Where we don't want grapplers like Vito Ottofermo. Right? A guy who Marvin Hagler couldn't beat initially, at least according to the judges. I thought Marvin won the fight, but whatever, right? But those are the kind of fighters who can mess with technicians. As I've said in earlier videos, Floyd Mayweather was asked, and Mayweather is a great interview, who his toughest opponents were. One of them that he named was Emmanuel Augustus, a head scratcher, a guy who had lost a bunch of fights. If you replay that fight, you're going to see Emmanuel Augustus forcing Floyd to fight, right? Floyd's a pot shotter, not a combination guy. He's not Ray Leonard, right? Different mindset. Combination punchers are in the trenches. Think Andy Ruiz, combination puncher at heavyweight right now. 
They're in the trenches. You know, the attitude is, okay, look, I have the hand speed. I'll risk health here in the pocket trading with you. Floyd wasn't a guy who wanted to trade. I don't believe Teofimo Lopez is. When they're in against a guy who's willing to trade, who's willing to get hit, who's willing to hold one of your hands to hit you with the other one, who's bullying you, who's not trying to fight behind the jab, who's actually deep in the pocket trying to walk through you, then you have problems. Right? I believe Jose Carlos Ramirez would give Teofimo Lopez a tougher fight than would Gervonta Davis. Then would Devin Haney. Then would Ryan Garcia. Let me also say too, and I don't say this lightly, what's going on at 135? Right? Devin Haney seems to be doing more talking than fighting. Right? This... This, to me, is a variation of what's going on at heavyweight. You know Teofimo Lopez right now is one of the biggest names in boxing. You understand the boxing purists, they've just seen him beat Lomachenko. You know he's unbeaten. You understand that beating Lomachenko is much more commendable than beating Yorkies Gamboa. At what point does the fighter say to his promoter, Make the fight, right? You know, I'm in the game to be the best. Make the fight. I'm young. I'm in my prime. I'm talking to the press as if I'm one of the best in the sport pound for pound. I know this guy is big for the division. He's not going to be in the division in 12 months. Make the fight. Let's have it out right now. Understand, you'll probably end up with a situation like you had at Cruiser, where Usyk becomes undisputed, can't stay at the weight, is up at heavy, right? He's in his 30s. His body said, hey, it's over, dude. We're not at Cruiser weight. <laughs> you're either fighting at heavyweight or you're not fighting at all. Right? You know Teofimo Lopez's body is telling him 140, even though you got Jake LaMotta types at 140. Right? So I don't so I don't get it. I don't understand. I really don't. How these media outlets are letting this thing linger. Right? If I'm Gravante Davis, understand there are two schools of thought. One school is like, man, that was a devastating KO, wasn't it? Wow, off an uppercut. My goodness, you're watching that fight, you feel decapitated, watching the fight against Leo Santa Cruz. But there's another school of thought. What's he doing fighting Leo Santa Cruz? Leo Santa Cruz isn't a KO puncher. Leo Santa Cruz is too light. Shouldn't Leo Santa Cruz be fighting Shakur Stevenson? Why isn't Gervonta Davis up at 135 in the deep water? fighting the Ryan Garcias, fighting the Devin Haney's, dare I say, trying to climb the entire mountain by fighting Teofimo Lopez. Right? So I don't get it. Too many guys are unbeaten. That tells me there's some bubbles out there. Right? Gravante Davis, unbeaten. Devin Haney, unbeaten. Ryan Garcia, unbeaten. Right? If you're an unbeaten fighter and you really believe you're the baddest man in the land, if you really want to blow up Twitter, if that's your lifestyle, fight the best in the division before he leaves the division. Right? Devin Haney and Teofimo Lopez, that fight should be made. If people are making outrageous purse demands so that the fight's not financially tenable. They're, in effect, dodging you by making an outrageous demand, right? That's a Bernard Hopkins move. Call him out. Then move on to plan B. We shouldn't be in a lull in boxing where we're wondering who Teofimo Lopez's next fight is. Not only that, understand, Teofimo 
has already fought. Comey, Lomachenko, Nakatani, <laughs> right? He's already fought those guys. And so to me, it's up to his competition to call him out. Then you have to make the fight work in negotiations. I'm sorry, I know I've gotten a lot of heat for this online. But something's wrong in boxing. When I'm waiting around for the Wilder-Joshua fight, blame whoever you want. Blame whoever you want. But I'm waiting around for that fight. And it doesn't happen. <laughs> right? Yeah, something's wrong. Well, something's wrong at 135 if everyone is supposed to be calling everyone else out and no one's fighting each other. Let me close by saying, look, I have the utmost respect for Buddy McGirt. The utmost respect. Right? Buddy, talk about the guys at 135. Let's not talk about a champ at 135 fighting an unbeaten fighter with eight KOs at 130, right? Come on. Let's be fair. Let's be realistic. Also, the styles matter, right? If Devin Haney is going to be on his back foot jumping around the ring and Teofimo Lopez enters the fight as the favorite and is on his front foot trying to walk down Devin Haney, who's moving away from him. I don't see how Haney wins that fight on the scorecards. You know, just out of deference, the judges are going to give slow rounds to Lopez. Right? Because Lopez is proven. Because Lopez's last fight wasn't against a guy in his late 30s. Let's be real here. Anyway, that's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Let me also add a caveat here. Right? Ryan Garcia, I understand. The people around him need to protect him from himself. Right? I get it. Young guy who's fearless, I'm guessing Ryan Garcia wouldn't hesitate to fight the guys at 140. Even though, in my opinion, he'd get blown out. So I get that people around him, Oscar De La Hoya and some others are saying, hey, we just fought Luke Campbell. Right? We're making... <laughs> We're fighting world-class fighters now, right? We're in against world-class fighters. Give this time. Let us fight one or two more before we try to fight Lopez. Just understand the flip side of that argument is that a Ryan Garcia-Lopez fight probably will not take place anytime within the next two years. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.